guest is back on Broadway after more than 10 years away. He's starring in the romantic comedy It Should Have Been You. Hey, David Burka, How you doing? I'm Paul. So good to see you here. I'm so glad to be here. So good to be that you're back on Broadway. I'm back on Broadway. You know, you were gone for so long that I started thinking, he's not coming back. No. <laughs> I didn't think I was coming back either. Really? No. I knew, I always knew that we'd get back to New York someday. Yeah. You know, but when, you know, you choose things in life, different paths. Yeah. And I chose love. Yeah. It took me to L.A. Right. And uh, it is what it is. You know, we were thinking that Neil's show, How I Met Your Mother, yeah. would run a couple of years. Neil, uh, Neil, Neil. Neil who? Patrick Harris. Oh, I, right, right, right. I'm the, married, the, I'm married, the Hedwig, Hedwig guy. I'm married to that guy, yeah. yeah that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we thought it was going to run a couple of years, and it ran nine years. Right, look so at that. So we stayed in L.A. for a while. And, well, yeah, uh, it's a good reason to stay. Yeah, <laughs> it was nice. Very fortunate, very grateful for that chapter in yeah. our lives. But knowing that I wanted to raise my kids in New York, mm -hmm. wanted to be out east, have seasons, change, evolution, mm -hmm. watching all around you, mm -hmm. um, it was great to know that New York was always there and yeah. Broadway was always there. Yeah, it's there and you're back. And I saw your show, should have been you, and I loved it. Thanks. So adorable, so funny, so sweet. How are previews going? It's going. We're we're chipping at it. Yeah, you know we're we're doing it. We're in the midst of it. We had whole week of previews last week, right. and we're working every day from twelve to five, and then we have a dinner break, and then we go do a show. It's it's been great, and I'm so fortunate and happy to be doing it. And there are really great surprises in the show, which is what I and I'm I'm actually afraid that people are going to start ruining it because it's it's really fun to like go in not really knowing much. I sort of knew. But going in not knowing anything into the show is really, really awesome. So don't read. I don't know if I trust the critics. And, yeah, you know I'm what wondering I mean? if they're gonna when when you get reviewed if they're gonna give away I know, the they ending not. or not. I hope not. They better not. Spoiler their, alerts. They should put butts. like big fonts or something. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. If you don't yeah. wanna know. Yeah, because surprises really make it a lot of fun because it's yeah. not the show you think it is. Yeah, it's sort of you know you're you're watching. You think it's one one piece of theater and yeah. then you get the rug pulled out from under yeah. you and you're sort of like, oh my gosh, this is not what I expected right. at all. Right, right. So, so, so your bride-to-be, Sierra Bagas, we love her here at thebroadway.com. How, how's she doing? How, is amazing. she about driving you crazy with her video blog? Is she putting she does. She, there's not enough of me on it. Oh, you want more? More? We need like a whole episode. A sit-down, like right. this. Okay, uh, okay. In addition to this, <laughs> Sierra, I want you to do a sit-down. Uh, I'm always I'm always making fun of her for it, but uh, you know she's amazing. She's so great and gracious and fun, and she is not necessarily who you think she is. Right. Yeah. Because like she's said, you know the Disney probably, princess, but she's got a lot of yeah. Uh, yeah. you know she's a little naughty girl. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. We like we like that. Yeah. A Disney princess with a little naughty girl. <laughs> Disney princess gone bad. <laughs> but so good. Yeah. She is, she cracks me up. Yeah. We laugh through the whole show. Laugh through the whole show. That's good. That's oh yeah, good. that oh, whole yeah. cast seems like it's a pretty great group of people. Everybody, and I, there's not a bad seed. Right. Usually, you can say, you know what, I don't really get along with that right. person, right. but everyone's a plus. So really, and it probably I starts really, at the top. They always say that it starts at the top. It right? really does. It so, starts with well, Daryl Roth, who's the producer, right. Scott Landis, two of the nicest producers in the business, right. and David Hyperius, Brian Hardgrove. Right. David Hyperius directing. Yeah, David Hyperius yeah. directing, who yeah. is the nicest man in the whole entire yeah. world. He's just, you don't even, he doesn't even get mad. If he's upset, he sort of looks at you. <laughs> Pull it together, guys. You know, sort of, sort of that sort of thing. Uh -huh. And then you feel so bad because, you know, getting, getting talked to by David, right. you know you've done something really right. bad. <laughs> it seems like he'd be the perfect like, kind of personality to deal with previews. Because, you know, he just would keep it very, like, well, even. I'm, and... What I'm saying lately now is that, I think they're, Brian and him know live Brian audiences. Brian is his real partner who wrote, wrote his, the show. He's his real right. partner right. who actually wrote the show with yeah. Barbara right. and Salmi who, right. who wrote the music. Yes. And he wrote the book. And they're perfect for previews because they've done so much live TV, you know, being mm. a producer and a writer in Caroline in the City and, yeah. and David, David doing Frasier oh, yeah, that for Frasier, so long. Oh, yeah, that thing, yeah. They were <laughs> in front of a studio audience every single day of their lives for how many years? Right. So they can see and sense what an audience is liking, what they're not liking, new jokes are coming in, old jokes are being put back, yeah. you know, things are being cut. So this is their time to shine, I think. Yeah. I think it's really been amazing to watch them work and see how the audience is reacting. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really, 
it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see how we evolve. Right. The whole thing is set on a wedding day, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of jitters and there's a lot of drama and secrets. Don't mm -hmm. don't tell the secrets. Lots if you secrets. know the secrets, don't tell them. Uh, how were you on your wedding day? I was good. I saw the pictures. You looked really cool and relaxed. Thank and, you. Yeah. Thank you. It was a really <laughs> fun weekend. We yeah. had a blast. We had an absolute blast. It was really small. Yeah. And um, we wanted it to be that way. We only immediate family. My sister, my dad, uh, you know, our parents, yeah. Neil's parents, his his brother, and uh -huh. that was it for the immediate family. We didn't ask cousins and aunts and uncles right. just because it gets to be. You invite one person, you got to yep. invite everybody. Yeah, that's Or a someone gets list. upset. You yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, and so then our closest friends, who we consider family, yeah. our closest friends. No big revelations, like like in the show, nothing happened, no, cra no craziness happened. It all went as planned. Well, you know, the the weekend, we had such a great guy helping us, Mark Seed, uh -huh. who was Amy Pascal's, who's a big, he was Sony exec, uh, his, her assistant uh -huh. forever. And right. so he stepped away for a bit, wanting to do what he needed to do for himself. Mm -hmm. And he ended up planning our wedding, and it was beyond. I mean, wow. what he did, because Neil was super crazy with Hedvig, and we were yeah. moving into a new house, yeah. and moving from LA to New York. So we had a ton of things going on. And uh, we had a lot of help with him, and it was a whole weekend. It was a Friday, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nice. It's a giant event that everybody came to. Nice. Um, we all stayed in the same place uh -huh. and there were different events and things you could do during the day and different dinners and themes and everybody was a part of it. Everyone got to do, because we had no wedding party, we didn't have bridesmaids right. and groom, you know, groomsmen. Right. Everyone had a special part to play uh -huh. for the weekend. Nice. So everyone had a job to do. Uh -huh. So by the end of the ceremony, you know, everyone got boutonnieres and corsages saying you're a part of the wedding party. Uh -huh. And that was super, yeah. super fun to have everyone be yeah. a part of it. I, if there was one sort of thing that I'd say was different than what we thought. You know, the whole ceremony, you'd never, you know, we have four-year-olds and you never know what they're gonna do. <laughs> and the, what we wanted our daughter to walk down the aisle, be the flower girl, put yeah. the flowers, and then my son be the, you know, ring bearer, but he was the orange boy, this whole thing that he came up with. <laughs> Side note, which was hilarious, but fun. He pa wanted to pass out oranges to everybody. He's, you know wanted everyone to have good vitamin yeah. C. But That's she hilarious. didn't want to go out. She did not, you know, she refused. And oh, then really? Gideon went out and did his thing and came back. And then, you know, sort of the, the vows and the way that the ceremony went with, you know, the light going down too fast and not getting enough pictures. So, but you know, it's, it was still was an amazing day. Right, right. It still was really, really nice. You're, you're killing me with those Halloween <laughs> portraits you guys do. Oh my God, I'm like obsessed with them. There was actually a huge debate on the site with, with your last one about what your daughter was dressed as. Well, who was she supposed to be? She was old school cat girl. Cat girl from like the old TV cat show? Woman. Cat yeah, the woman, yeah, the, from the comic book. We did comic the book. comic book. We did the old school comic book because once okay. you get into like Michelle Pfeiffer mode and Halle right. Berry, that's like not appropriate for a four year old. No, 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 no. <laughs> so we showed them comic strips, we showed them, you know, old school videos right. of the old Catwoman, yeah. the old Batman, Joker, Riddler. We did yeah. that sort of, you know, we didn't do the movie versions, we did authentic comic strips. You're officially like the most adorable Halloween family. I mean, oh my God, and the Wizard of Oz one, that's like, that's like, that, that, that's just, that's genius. M from a young age, our kids have loved costumes. I mean, we love costumes. Right, You're an actor right, family, you know? Right. So we're always yeah. pretending and playing and yeah. putting on silly hats and wigs and things like that. So they love it. They, so, you know, she, my daughter loves wearing wigs. Do you, <laughs> do you have like the next one figured out already? Like, it seems like a lot of work. Like no. now you have, now, now every year, like you have to come up with an awesome, I'm we're gonna be really disappointed if one year you're like, we're just I not gonna thought, do it. no, I think we have to. Yeah, it's you like have a to tradition, do it. right? <laughs> you have to. I mean, the thing is now they have opinions. Oof. <laughs> Children speak for themselves, so you know they'll want to be what they want to be. But maybe right. we'll still do a family. I family want like a Broadway-themed one. Really? Yeah, maybe come with like a Broadway. I don't know what it should be, but something Broadway. -themed. All leading ladies, or you know, Carol Channing, <laughs> Evita. I don't know. Speaking of leading ladies, what was it like living with Hedvig? Terrible. <laughs> it was a tricky time. It was crazy. It was. Um, he was so busy yeah. and in such a different mindset. And he was so skinny. Right. And he yes. was shaved. <laughs> he was not himself. Right. You know, yeah. he became sort of this transgender yeah. person. Yeah. 
Truly, yeah. and it was it was wild. I mean, we had just moved to New York City, right. and the kids were transi transitioning, and he was doing the show every transitioning day. Transitioning in a different way from L.A. to New from York. From L.A. to New York, Correct. we yes. moved. Yes, and so it was it was a it was a wild time. It was a wild ride for all of us. Yeah. Um, you know, he had to be he'd have late shows, so he wouldn't get home until. Yeah two o'clock or when he did have a show at eight o'clock, he would, wouldn't go to bed until two because he was so right, jazzed course, still. Yeah. And then he still had to get eight to nine hours of sleep. So I was taking the kids to school and getting yeah. them ready every single day. And- You were living with a rock star. Yeah. Yeah. It, basically, and then he, it was hard because he wasn't able to see the kids much. Yeah. Because by the time they went to school and by the time they came back for a nap, he was gone yeah. to the theater because he had to get warmed up, he had to work out, right. he had to eat at a certain time, and then makeup took two hours alone. Wow. So yeah. it was like his whole day. Right. All day. Right. And then on his day off, he just wanted to sleep. Right. And I don't blame him. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so great that he's back yeah. and he's here and he's taking the reins for me. Like he's taking the kids to school every day and making them breakfast. And See that? It all he's, turns. My God, he's just, I'm so lucky to have him in my life and, yeah. and happy that, you know, things have shifted in a way that I get to work now because it's been, you know, really nine years since I've really done a steady job. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I worked at E for a while, uh, worked at E as uh, a co-host for E! News. Uh -huh. And that was weird because, you know, I'd work during the, the morning and the day and I'd had the show, and, but I'd be home at like 2.30. Right. So right. wasn't, right. and then I had a catering right. company, but I worked sort of at home. So, right. you know, cooking yeah, at home. Yeah, but I heard you, you became a chef. I did become yes. a chef, yeah. Are you really good at it? Have you created dishes? Sure. Yeah. What, 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 what's like something amazing? Um, did you bring anything or? <laughs> Was I supposed to? We have a cooking demo? Or we're gonna, what, let's make shrimp tacos. Like, I don't know. You, do you make tacos? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, um, you know, when we moved out to LA, things weren't going as I planned. You uh -huh. know, as an actor, I thought, oh, I'd get a TV show right away. And uh -huh. things didn't really happen that way. Right. Um, I took a different path and then my mom died. Yeah. And that sucked, and yeah. I'm like, I'm out in LA, and I'm getting rejected every day, and I need to do something for me. I need to make sure that You're I'm okay. suddenly. It's really, yeah. really sad. It was weird. Yeah. It's like 20 days, boom, gone. Wow. Weird, wow. weird. Um, and then I thought, you know, what makes me happy? Cooking. I always love to cook. You know, whenever I get depressed, I'd make a chicken stock or a homemade tort or a cake or something like that. Uh -huh. Just, to, you know, it's therapeutic. Uh -huh. So I ended up going to cooking school just for a skill, and it sort of took off. Wow. I really, after graduation, I ended up working with Mario Batali mm -hmm. over at Babo, and then I started working with you know Cat Cora became a friend. I Wait, meaning you her. were actually working at the restaurant? Yeah, like I worked would... on the line. Yeah, I worked on the, really? the grill station. They they bumped me up really fast. So I was working garmanger, which means like cold apps and appetizers and wow. cold dishes and things. And then I started working the grill, which was. Insane, you know, 12 hours over a hot grill, burning yourself. I have like burns oh, yeah, you all up do. and down my arm. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. You know, 14 hour shifts, uh, you know, from 12 o'clock in the morning to about, you know, two o'clock in the morning. Wow. On your feet, sweating, burning yourself. It was hardcore. Wow. And I realized, you know what? This is too much. Right? This is too yeah. hard for me. I, you know, let me go back to tap dancing. <laughs> Which is hard. Eight shows a week is hard, but not, right. not right. Like, being a chef right. is insane. Do you make any uh, Polish dishes? You're Polish. So yeah. am I. We're both Polish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 100% yeah. Polish. So do you make like uh, pierogies and kielbasa? I have, yeah. You have done I mean, that? yeah, for sure. Yeah. Pierogies, you know, they're in, they're long and intensive. It's it's a yeah. lot of work to yeah. do. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. don't really. Yeah. You know, is it worth thing, it? I made a uh, kruschiki, which is really great. Those um, fried dough with powdered sugar okay, on it, They're like uh -huh, angels wings. Uh huh. Those are really yeah, good. Yeah. Anything. Anytime you say the words fried and dough, fried I'm dough. Good. Yeah. It's yeah. Like basically like a Polish donut, but yeah. more like a beignet sort of. Uh huh. Yeah. Light crispy. Yeah. Bring that next sugar. time. Sugar. Bring that. You and got tacos. It. You got tacos. it. Tacos. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, the other funny thing is, I don't know if you knew this, we have the same birthday. Get out, really? May 29, same birthday. Wow, Lisa Howard, who plays. Uh, Yes. Uh, her her son, I just learned. Really? Her there's a lot of there's actually a lot of awesome people born on May 29. Do you can you name any? John F Kennedy. Yes. Bob Hope. Yes. Uh, those are the classics. I grew up knowing those two. There's some more. Annette Benning. Annette Benning, yes. Yeah. 
I once, oh my gosh, I was at a, an event and I had had a couple drinks. <laughs> and she was there and I'm like, we have the same birthday! <laughs> she didn't, she was like, oh, who great. are you? Okay, great. Get away. Come what on. would you have done if I did that to you? If I was like, if I stood that same, like if I come up to you like wasted at a party, it was like, I, I and had I the not same known birthday. Security. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of like, okay, what do you want to do about exactly. that? Exactly. What, <laughs> what, what do I care? Uh, do you know anyone else? Because I did you know um, Lisa uh, Welchel, Blair from The Facts of Life? Oh. She, that's a good one. Uh, another <laughs> one is Laverne Cox, which I didn't know Get until out. I literally... Was, Laverne she's Cox shares new, our birthday. She's series. younger than both of us. She's got a new series for CBS. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah, Laverne Cox. So Same cool. birthday. Who else? Uh, Melissa Etheridge. Oh, yeah, I knew that. You should know that one. I knew that. Yeah, I figured you knew that one. May 29th is like a pretty it's important a day, day, right? It's a Look good at that. day. And you're actually going to hit a milestone soon. Good. Can we talk about it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you are going to be 30. Or 40. 40. <laughs> How's that feel? I'm playing a 30-year-old in the show. You, and you totally and I, pass. You pass for 30. I, I sleep in a pan full of bleach. <laughs> um, no. So how does that feel? You're back on Broadway and you're turning 40. That, I'm, that, I'm thrilled. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think... If I didn't have so many wonderful things in my life, if I didn't have kids, if yeah. I wasn't married, yeah, if I didn't have a lovely home, yeah. if I wasn't working, I think I would feel a little like, oh my God, like yeah. my life yeah. is terrible. Yeah, there's nothing but I'm there. so grateful and yeah. so happy for all these amazing gifts in my life that things are good. Will there be a good. big party? Well, I don't know. See, Neil's birthday, when he turned 40, yeah. I threw him the ultimate scavenger hunt. A week-long oh. scavenger hunt that went from L.A. that started with a giant party. Wow. And then a week-long across America. What? That's crazy. And ended a giant party in New York. Wow. So, you know, he's got something up his sleeve. He has to. I mean, that's he a lot better. to live up to. I literally spent a year producing this. And he's not, on, he's not doing a show right now. He has time. He's got time. <laughs> he, right now, he's probably... I mean, I don't think I want, like, a big, long scavenger hunt. Okay. I, I can't. I mean, I, a, can't I have a Friday country. night show and two shows the next day. You can My go from, like, downtown Friday. to uptown. Yeah. Yeah, you could pull But then I've got two shows the next day. I can't oh. be... Yeah. You know? i got to take care of myself. got to sleep. Because yeah. save the voce. Yeah. <laughs> you know, doing a musical is a lot harder than, you know, doing a play. You can yeah. just walk in drunk. Yeah. Yeah. You need walk better in. performance. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of plays, I first saw you in the play about the baby. Down, which was uh, in Union Square, right? That theater has a different. Oh, it's not a theater me. anymore. Oh yeah, it's not it's a theater like anymore. A, it's, it's like, like a, a, a club meeting for, meeting hall yeah. or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but um, you were naked. Yeah, and you were um, memorably naked because a lot of people have appeared naked, but you you know a lot of times there's like a like a quick naked moment with a little soft lighting. You were like running around the stage with your thing flap. I, I like it was you were literally like it was it was very naked. Yeah. How'd that feel? Freeing. You won an award for it. Yeah. <laughs> it, was my, it was my penis. My penis won an award. I'm glad we cleared that up. Um, <laughs> no, but like, did you, I have a question. I have a friend who did a show mm -hmm. where he had to be naked. Did you have to audition naked? No. Okay, so that wasn't part of the... No, I originally auditioned. It was weird. It's a weird story. I, I it was studying at William S. Burr Studios, and I was doing a lot of commercials. I made a lot of money, you know, doing... Lots of commercials. Right. And Jerry Beaver was working, uh, I knew him really well because he used to cast me in a lot of things. And he said, you know, I have a really good play for you to audition for. I'm like, I'm really not auditioning for plays right now. I'm in school and I'm just doing musicals. And he said, it's an Edward Albee play, brand new Edward Albee play. And Highbrow. I'm like, I'm there. Yeah. So I go in, I'm supposed to prepare a monologue. I go in and Edward's sitting there. Wow. Because he was directing this pr production of the new, the play about the baby at the Alley Theater, sort of okay. our out of town tryout before right. we got to New York. And I did my monologue and he said, great. I left and I got a call that afternoon that wow. I got the part. I had to re-audition when David S. Bjornsson directed it right. in New York. Right. It was TR Knight and myself. Right. And I ended up getting the part, but it there was, was down no- down to the two of you. Down to two of us. Okay. But there was no like, uh, he did say, are you comfortable getting naked? Okay. And I said, yeah, I do my best work naked. <laughs> Is that that was true previously totally before true. that? <laughs> I still did. Um, it's all down here from the, all downhill from there. So you and TR Knight both had to get naked and run around in circles. What no, happened? no, no, we didn't. We just you know we did ended up doing the scene from the show and and that was it. And wow. Then he got a big TV show. <laughs> 
And then you were in that gypsy. Now, this gypsy production made me really angry because I, I loved ended up doing it. the goat between that. I oh, yeah, up, yeah, yeah. That was my Broadway by. debut. Yeah. Right. So you did yeah. all be on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Did you go on? Mm. That was a crazy play. Crazy. Wow. Sally Field uh, and Bill Irwin were the parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was fun. Oh, wait and a then Gypsy was, and then Gypsy was after that. Yeah, but I have to ask you about another, a different musical first. You were in Beauty and the Beast on tour. Uh -huh. What were you? you were like a fork or something? Were you, were I you was a... the dancing pepper shaker. You were the pepper shaker. Yeah, and I covered the carpet because I could tumble. Wow. Yeah. You can tumble. I was like a tall that. carpet. The, <laughs> the, now the pepper shaker is a pivotal role. Huge. You, it's it's not mean, salt. It's pepper. It's, it's pepper. I mean, it has its own it's personality. Spicy. <laughs> was that uh, fun? Was that crazy? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, it was, was that literally your first, like, equity my second, no, job? my first equity, well, I'd done a lot of summer stock, so I had my equity okay. card. And then my first gig out of, I was, I moved to New York with like $350 in the bank and first month's rent. Wow. I was broke, you know, I yeah. needed money. Yeah. So, you know, a big touring show, Nash, first national tour. So wait, back to Gypsy. So this mm -hmm. Gypsy production made me angry because I loved it. A lot of people were mean about it. Right? Like, because it was very different. Because well, it was like the, it was, even, it was it Sam was Mendes. Even, you know, it, unfortunately, it was even more different. Um, there were, it was really dirty and raunchy and there was a lot of cigar smoke and the costumes were sort of dirty. Yeah. And, and at the end, Rose's turn, she was supposed to be, you know, mascara running and dark and I love that. sexy. And, and Arthur Lawrence came in and him and Sam did not get along. And he was like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You know, he added swear words and, you know, Cigar, the, you know, the owner of the strip club was feeling up the strippers and doing things with wow. them. And, and it, was, it was amazing. Yeah. What Sam envisioned was incredible. And it turned out to be the way it was supposed to be, you know, the way. It still had a little, it still had a little edge. It was still edgy, yeah, but yeah. I think but it could have been, you know, a, a Sam Mendes production, it, it was not. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't cabaret. Yeah, right. And he wanted it to be right. cabaret. I wish we saw that. A real, you know, raw, it was really raw. Yeah, wow. And then it's, it's crazy that, that that Arthur sort of did his own version and seemed to take a lot of the things that. See that? I know, I know it's weird. Gypsy has a weird history. But I loved it. Did, did you have fun show. with uh, uh, Bernadette Peters? Amazing. She's yeah. an amazing woman. She is so generous and kind and a legend. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah. Bernadette Peters. Yeah, yeah she was incredible. Um, and you also were really tight with Kate. Rinders. She introduced Neil and I together. We, okay, she set wait. us up together. I, want, I wanted to clarify this. I heard you met on 8th and 44th. 40, like between 44th and 45th, yeah. Now it's where that sort of um, shopping area is, that outside shopping area. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a big sort of structure there, and I sort of, we, we met in passing, and... Uh, That's 45th, 46th. I just want to clarify your story. It is. <laughs> I I, so. You're right, you're right. 45th, 40, 45th. 45th, 46th, right, right, yeah. okay. You were with her and, and you were doing Gypsy together. Yeah. And then she said, this is Neil Patrick Harris. And Neil was doing uh, cabaret. cabaret. Right. And we met and I sort of brushed him off. I was like, hey, what up? And, <laughs> As uh, you do. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was in a relationship at the time uh -huh. and it wasn't going as well as it uh -huh. could have been. Uh -huh. You know, long distance in LA. And, uh, and, you know, we ended up breaking up and Neil was sort of like circling like a hawk. Was he? Yeah. Well, he'd, he'd be like, like you'd see him like, you'd be like, is that Neil up in the balcony at Gypsy? What's, is he? No, he and Kate were so close that Kate would call him and be like, okay, we're going to Barrymore's later. She was trying to get this whole yeah, thing done. Yeah, and he'd show up and I'd be like, what? Neil Patrick Harris here <laughs> I'd be at Angus McAdoo's and he's, why is he? At, <laughs> he's stalking me. Persistent. Yeah. See that? A totally. stalker. A stalker. It totally worked out. Totally worked Sometimes out. Sometimes a stalker. <laughs> and he ended up, we ended up, um, a couple of years later, we were coming through from LA to New York. Uh -huh. uh, we stopped off in the city, and I got out. I took him out of a car that a car we were taking, and I proposed at the same place, like wow. around the corner. Wow! So wow! And I was taking my kids down the street the other day, and I was like, "This is where your daddy and papa met." And they're like looking in the window. They're like, "I want that." Lollipop. I could care less. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of demand for you and Neil to like do a show together. Hmm. Would you ever would you ever even consider that? Yeah. I, I enjoyed your your the top performance. That that was good on YouTube. But um, is there any uh, 
Was it, can you ever see that happening? Yeah. Really? Um, Williamstown's been asking if we would want to come in and do something. I think we're a little old for Blood Brothers. <laughs> I would love Blood Brothers. But why not? Carrie <laughs> Butler? That'd be amazing. Yeah, totally. Get her in there. Why not? Yeah. She's, you know, she still can play 20. <laughs> she, she totally looks, can. Yeah. Yeah. And you can play 30. Everyone can just do it. Do Blood Brothers. I like that. I think Wait, which would, one would you be? Would you be the dark one or the... I'd be the dark one. Okay. You'd be the dark one. He'd yeah. do like the... Okay. I'm more, you know, I've done all be. I'm more dark. I'm, you know. God. Kind of Don't they both end up dead? Macabre. That's what yeah. happens, yeah. Who who would be the who would be the mom? I come on, Dreamcast. Hmm. That's, I mean, that's the role. Tell me it's not true. Who could who could sing it well, Patty? Patty Lapone. This is a dream production. Can we? I, I'm, what about City of Angels? That's a good. I just saw that in London. That's a good show. I think Neil and I would be. So again, who's the? He'd be Stein. I'd be Stone. You're always the dark one. This is how this is how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this says a lot. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, or I, we could do Secret Garden. I think we're a little young, maybe oh, for Secret Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you can build up to that. Maybe. Yeah, you gotta get rid of the boyish faces, and then you could do Secret Garden. Yeah, we're a little. Yeah, well, yeah. you know. Blood Brothers. Bleach. No, I Ble think it's Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers. Let's get Patty on this. I, I, I'm gonna try to pull this together. Nice. All right, let's, good. Let's try it. All right, good. Let's I'm do glad, it. I'm glad. Concert it. version. Is this Encore. a is this a, a verbal commitment that you would be into this? Yeah. Okay, good. Sure. All right, cool. Well, I have to let you get back to rehearsal because you have a whole new yeah. number to learn. Yeah, I got to stretch. You got a whole new thing. <laughs> um, so uh, it should have been you. It's opening April 14th. April 14th. At the Brooks Atkinson Theater on Broadway. Go see it. This guy, David Burke, is so good in it. I'm so glad you're back on Broadway. I'm so, I'm glad you're so here. thrilled. I'm so, so good happy. to see you. Uh, happy birthday on May 29th. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.